If this video hits 100,000 views, we will draw the next prize, iPhone 13 or Samsung S22 Ultra, first of the next month. All you have to do is like the video and leave a comment down below with the word InfoScoop. More comments mean a bigger chance to win our prize. The great physicist was an renowned pacifist, so why did he urge the U.S. to fund such a devastating weapon? Albert Einstein is perhaps most famous for introducing the world to the equation E equals mc squared. In essence, he discovered that energy and mass are interchangeable, setting the stage for nuclear power and atomic weapons. His part in the drama of nuclear war may have ended there if not for a simple refrigerator. In the 1920s, while living in Berlin, the physicist collaborated with Hungarian graduate assistant Leo Szilard to develop and patent an energy-efficient fridge. While their design never went to market, the duo's work ultimately embroiled Einstein, an avowed pacifist, in the race to create an atomic bomb during World War II. Now, more than seven decades since nuclear explosions ripped through Hiroshima and Nagasaki, United Nations member states are negotiating the first ever treaty to ban nuclear weapons worldwide. It's something Einstein himself argued for vehemently in his later life as he struggled with the deadly consequences of his scientific creation. His brilliance was also his downfall, says National Geographic Fulbright fellow Ari Basir. The revolution that came with the splitting of the atom requires a moral one as well. Even after Szilard and Einstein ended their partnership over appliances, the two scientists stayed in touch. In 1933, the same year Adolf Hitler became Chancellor of Germany, Szilard discovered the nuclear chain reaction, the process that unleashes the energy locked in atoms to create enormous explosions. And by 1939, he became convinced that German scientists might be using current scientific developments to develop an atomic weapon. So he approached his one-time colleague, then the world's most famous scientist, and asked him to warn U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Szilard visited Einstein in New York with two fellow refugees, Hungarian physicist Edward Tellard and Eugene Wigner. When they told him about the possibility of a nuclear chain reaction, Einstein was shocked at the danger posed by his 1905 special theory of relativity. He certainly was not thinking about this theory as a weapon, says Cynthia Kelly, president of the Atomic Heritage Foundation a nonprofit organization she founded to preserve and interpret the Manhattan Project and its broader legacy. But he quickly got the concept. Together with the other scientists, Einstein drafted a letter to Roosevelt that warned of what might happen if Nazi scientists beat the United States to an atom bomb. It appears almost certain that a nuclear chain reaction could be achieved in the immediate future, he wrote. Sounding the alarm on extremely powerful bombs of a new type, and advising the Roosevelt Fund and Initiative to research atomic energy. Roosevelt took the warning seriously. On October 21, 1939, two months after receiving the letter and just days after Germany's invasion of Poland, the Roosevelt-appointed Advisory Committee on Uranium met for the first time. It was the forerunner of the Manhattan Project, the top-secret government project that eventually invented a working atom bomb. The committee was only given $6,000 in funding, so Einstein continued writing to the president, assisted by Szilard, who wrote large portions of the letters. One letter even warned that Szilard would publish key nuclear findings in a scientific journal if the initiative was not better funded. In this way, Einstein helped spark the Manhattan Project, says Kelly, but his actual involvement was very marginal. The FBI file on the outspoken scientist who openly criticized racism, capitalism, and war, would eventually grow to over 1,800 pages. In view of his radical background, the FBI wrote, this office would not recommend the employment of Dr. Einstein on matters of a secret nature. In the end, Einstein never received security clearance to work on the Manhattan Project. Still, his name is forever connected to the weapon born of his greatest discovery. He was devastated by the news of the Hiroshima bombing and humiliated by a time cover from 1946 that showed him in front of a mushroom cloud emblazoned with this famous equation. Though Einstein worked to warn the world about the perils of nuclear proliferation for the rest of his life, he struggled to make sense of his responsibility. He is the father of the atom bomb, says Basir, 
who is the grandson of the only U.S. servicemen aboard both planes that carried the atomic bombs to Japan. Today, Basir uses his storytelling to illustrate the aftermath of nuclear weapons. For instance, he visited Auschwitz with a survivor from Nagasaki, who was astonished at the connections between the bomb, which killed or wounded hundreds of thousands of civilians, and one of history's other horrors, the Holocaust. I was well aware of the dreadful danger to all mankind if these experiments would succeed, Einstein wrote of the bomb's development in a Japanese magazine in 1952. I did not see any other way out. For Basir, Einstein's dilemma illustrates the contradictions of the human condition. The splitting of the atom changed everything, except the way we think, he laments. Now, as governments hash out the details of nuclear weapons bans in the coming weeks, they'll confront the legacy Einstein helped create while working toward his deeply cherished wish for a more peaceful world. Discover the scientist whose ideas and theories about time and space changed the world and what we think about the universe in our 10 facts about Albert Einstein. Number 1. Albert Einstein was born in Germany but lived in Italy, Switzerland, and Chechnya, which was then part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which he eventually moved to the United States in 1933. Albert never went back to Germany after moving to the USA. He didn't feel safe in Germany because of the events that led to World War II and instead settled down to life in the American town of Princeton, New Jersey. Number 2. When Albert was a boy, he fell in love with physics when his father gifted him a compass. He was fascinated by the way the magnets moved inside of the compass and thought about this when he was older and coming up with his theories around relativity. Number 3. Albert hated the strict discipline of the grammar school he attended as a teenager and left aged 15. While at school, he excelled at math, physics, and philosophy, but struggled with other subjects like languages. Number 4. But he still managed to write his first scholarly paper at just 16 years old. The paper was inspired by his compass and discussed the force of magnetism. Number 5. Rather than becoming a physicist straight away, Albert first trained as a teacher. In 1896, he was accepted into the Swiss Federal Polytechnic School in Zurich, Switzerland. He originally failed the entrance exam, but was let in anyway due to his exceptional math results. However, this was on the condition that Albert also went to high school and finished his formal schooling. Number 6. After failing to work as a math and physics teacher, Albert decided to obtain a PhD in physics. He obtained his degree in 1905 a year that came to be known as Albert's Year of Miracles, because he published four groundbreaking papers in just 12 months. Number 7. One of the discoveries Albert announced in 1905 was his famous formula E equals mc squared. Albert figured out that matter, the tiny particles that make up everything in the world, can be turned into energy. The equation E equals mc squared describes how this conversion can be achieved. This amazing breakthrough made the 26-year-old Albert Einstein a star. Number 8. The formula formed part of Albert's general theory of relativity, which he worked on over the next 10 years. Other scientists, for example Dutch physicist Hendrik Lorentz, had already been forming pieces of the theory. However, Albert was the first one to put the whole thing together. He published the complete theory in 1915, where it wowed the world. Number 9. Albert's theory of relativity helped scientists understand how the universe works. Albert's theory showed that the effects of gravity result from the ways that objects affect space and time. These interactions can only be seen as enormous objects like the planets. As a result, Albert's general theory of relativity describes the way that amazing phenomena like the movement of planets, the birth and death of stars, black holes, and evolution of the universe are possible. Number 10. He went on to win the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1921. The Nobel Prize is an award for major scientific accomplishments, and by the time Albert won it, he and his discoveries were famous around the world. He continued working on theories until his death in 1955, aged 76. We would like to see what your opinion is on the topic. Please leave a comment about what you want to know next, like and share this video, and don't forget to hit the notification button. Till the next video.